We have a special guest today, Peter Chur from Academy Securities. He's the macro strategy, and I like going macro. Peter, welcome to Chicago, one of the few people exchanges at the CBOE. It is awesome. Here. The it is, is awesome. Great. Okay, here's what we're calling today's piece. Truth or scare with respect to January data. Now moving into February, we had today's jobs report. Next week, CPI, PPI. What did you think of today's jobs report considering jobs last month was 353,000 and boom, 167,000 in two month revisions? I would put the jobs report in that scare category. I think it was very underwhelming. Not only did you see uh, unemployment rise, you saw even within the jobs, a lot of part time jobs were created and a lot of full time jobs were lost. That does not seem healthy in this environment. You know, we had a discussion about this this morning on Squawk Box, and it was brought up and accurately that when you look towards history, many times a strong economy sees increases in part-time jobs, but you've said it a little different this time. Right. I think in the past you see the economy growing, so you hire people part-time, then you make them full-time. I think a lot of things have rolled over, and travel, for example, is rolling over a little bit, so you're turning people from full-time jobs into part-time. That is negative. It's slowing. And it's happening at a really bad time where Debt's rising again. Consumers are getting strapped, tapped out. And the other thing that I was really looking at this week was on the Jules report. They come out with a quit rate, and the quit rate was now lower than it typically was throughout 2016 to 2019. So the job data is not this great job market anymore. You can't turn around and get a job. I think we have to start factoring that in. You know, and another area that disturbed me today. Now, I understand that last year we had a 3.4% unemployment rate. Okay. Now, this year, so far, the low's been 3.5. However, to get a lower unemployment rate than 3.4, you're going back to 1953. And all of a sudden, now, we see 3.9% today. Basically, it jumps a half a percent from uh, 53 to a two-year high. What do you make of that? It always makes me nervous when you see that rate of change. Did people who needed that job lose their job? And if it's true that the hiring's going down, part-time jobs are all that available, what happens to spending? So I think consumer spending, which has been a big driver of this, and frankly a surprise many people, is no longer looking that good. Credit card debt is back above trend line. All these things that we talked about for two years post-COVID no longer exist. So I think we see rolling over. And another thing, we've been showing charts while we're talking, and if you look at twos and tens together, what you'll notice is, is that they both dip, but now they're both coming back. Two years actually coming back a bit stronger. Short maturities have taken the lead on being a little stubborn with regard to going Going down in yield, what do you think that's all about? So one, I think people are starting to realize it's a pretty narrow window for the Fed to cut. I do not think they can cut at September or November meeting ahead of the election. It will be viewed as political, whether it is or otherwise. So I think you're starting to think maybe one, maybe two cuts is all you get. And then at the long end, I think as people start campaign mode, and maybe the State of the Union last night is the start of the campaigns, people are going to get scared about the deficits again. And I think we're going to see tens go through 450, maybe towards 5% like we did last September, when all anyone focused on was the deficit. Right. And the long-term charts right now, very quickly, we see that we're basically at a four-week low yield close in twos, roughly about six weeks in tens. But we're still holding 4%, and I agree. Next week, CPI and PPI is going to tell the story. Peter Chur, thank you for joining me in Chicago.